Greetings, my name is Fatin Nur Ashikin and for my final year project, the title is Biodegradable Composites Reinforced with GNF Core Physical, Pencile and Degradable Properties. The composite-based GNF Core Fiber Polybutylene Adipate Coterephthalate PBAT has been prepared using melt blending method. PBAT reinforced with 10, 20 and 30% of GNF Core Fiber have been prepared and characterized. The physical, mechanical, morphological properties and biodegradability and the soil burial test of the obtained composites were compared. GNF Core Fibers were used in their natural state and their chemical composition was determined. The analysis reveals that the addition of GNF Core Fibers significantly reduced tensile strength due to poor interaction between the fiber and the polymer matrix. The composite reinforced with 10% Kenaf core fiber demonstrated excellent tensile strength. Furthermore, the water absorption rate of the composite increased as the percentage of Kenaf core fiber increased. As EM morphological analysis reveals that the interaction and the interfacial adhesion between the PBAT and Kenaf core fiber was poor. The fiber was not well distributed in the PBAT blend and remained agglomeration. After two months, the weight of the composite through soil burial test demonstrated a downward trend in Kenaf core PBAT. The results show that samples will biodegrade with longer soil burial duration. The findings suggest that Kenaf core fiber can be used as reinforcement for PBAT polymer in degradable material applications. Further research should be conducted to improve Kenaf core fiber and PBAT compatibility. Moving on to the objectives of this research. This research aims to investigate the properties of Kenaf Core in terms of its physical, tensile and degradability and its compatibility with PBAT. The specific objective of the research include number 1. To evaluate the physiomechanical and physical parameters of Kenaf Core PBAT biocomposite. Second is to investigate the compatibility between Kenaf Core with PBAT. The last one is to examine the biodegradation behavior of Kenaf Core PBAT biocomposite under soil condition. The problem statement is businesses, consumers and governments all have an interest in biodegradable and compostable polymers as an alternative to minimize municipal solid waste. Biodegradable plastic and polymers are increasingly in usage. The demand for alternative materials such as Kenaf Core as a filler and the reinforcement in polymer composites has increased. Consequently, the Kenaf Core will serve as a support for the structure. To combat deforestation and biodiversity loss, it is necessary to cultivate a non-wood crop that can fulfill the demand for raw materials from which paper and other products can be manufactured without causing destruction of forests and environmental damage. As a result, the National Economic Action Council NEAC, of Malaysia began the Kenaf Plantation Initiative in 1999 as another industrial crop to replace tobacco and avoid wood logging for the paper sector. The Kenaf plant was chosen due to its rapid growth, high productivity to land ratio, exceptional photosynthesis rate and compatibility of, for planting in the climate of Malaysia. Between 30 and 40% of the stem, known as the bark, can be utilized for a variety of high-value fiber applications, whereas between 60 to 70% of the stem, known as the core, can be utilized for a variety of thermochemical processes, including combustion, pyrolysis, and gasification. The seeds, stalks, leaves, and flowers of a canaf plant all have their own unique uses. Various functions call for each of these individual parts. A new study suggests using canaf leaves, which have antioxidant, anti-aging, and anti-melogenic capabilities as a high value component in the cosmetics business. Now, what is the significance of this study? This study will provide an awareness regarding the chemical properties of Kenafcor, therefore it will be beneficial to utilize the advantages Kenafcor can contribute. The study will also help in the advancement of biodegradable composites that have been widely researched to replace plastics and to reduce plastic waste globally. Moving on to the methods involved in order to achieve the results in this research. For raw materials, Kenaf core was obtained from local supplier in Pahang. After being air dried, the Kenaf core was screened to remove the fines and only 60 mesh sized particles used in this work. The chemical content of Kenaf core was then determined through chemical analysis. Then PBAT was purchased from a local supplier. Uh, the chemical analysis that were involved in this study includes the moisture content, cold water and hot water solubility, 1% of sodium hydroxide solubility, 
ash content, alcohol toluene, lignin content, whole cellulose, and lastly is alpha cellulose experiment. After chemical analysis, it is continued with the missing samples. Polymer biocomposites containing 10, 20, and 30% of core fiber were prepared using a real mixer batch mixer operating at 120 degrees Celsius and 60 RPM mixing rate. Heat matrix was melted first and then dried core fiber were added. The mixing proceeded for 13 minutes to allow the efficient dispersion of fillers in the respective matrix. After the mixing, we cast and cure the samples. The composites were cut into granules and then press molded at 130 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes under 100 bars using a benchtop press to form square plates for further characterizations. And then we proceeded with the testing samples. The first one is tensile strength test, which is a disruptive test that measures material tensile yield and ductility. It measures the force needed to break a composite of plastic specimen and how far it extends to break. The microstructure of biocomposite was examined by scanning electron micro SEM. Then the specimen's weight and volume were measured and they were immersed in deionized water for 28 days. The specimens that had been submerged were then retrieved again and any excess water was wiped away with a tissue paper. Studies on biodegradation under actual soil burial circumstances were conducted on the campus in UATM Jengke. The two-month soil biodegradation test was then conducted. Moving on, I will talk about the most important part of the study, which is the results. Based on the chemical analysis, there was a high amount of holocellulose content obtained, which is 85.2%. Next, for the density, between KC10, KC20 and KC30 in table, KC20 contains the highest density, though not much difference with KC10. KC30 showed a sudden drop in density and it was assumed due to the voids that may occur after the mixing. This voids may occur in the matrix, at the fiber matrix interface or within the fiber lumens. Then the results for tensile strength. Tensile strength declines with increasing kernel core content according to the line chart. Because the filler or kernel core cannot withstand the strain induced by the plant matrix, the tensile strength may drop. The problem was aggravated by the kernel core fiber, which inhibits stress transmission along the path of the applied force. Analysis of tensile strength reveals that the material's ability to withstand tension reduced as the proportion of kernel core fiber in the material increased. For the thickness swelling experiment, KC30 had the highest thickness swelling in a week, while PPAT or zero kernel reinforcement has the lowest. Temperature and humidity influenced the fiber composite's dimensional stability, which was linked to thickness swelling. Natural fiber swelling causes micro cracks and voids in the interfacial area, increasing water diffusion. Weak fiber to matrix contact and fiber distribution influence composite thickness swelling and dimensional stability. Improved interface and dispersion, lower swelling percentage, and increased composite dimensional stability. For water absorption, KC30 had the most water absorption and PBAT has the lowest. All compositions absorb water rapidly in the first few days of immersion before reaching equilibrium. The hydrophilic core, fiber and higher interfacial area of the composite absorb more water than the PBAT matrix. Moving on to the morphological analysis, the composite's quality depends on polymer band's morphological structure. Compared to KC10 and KC20, KC30 has the smoother surface. Since the elements don't face separate, the mixtures are miscible. For KC10, 20 and 30, poor addition was shown, hence the reduction in tensile strength. Now the last method, which is a soil barrel, showed results of samples after soil barrel test for 1 month and 2 months. The highest percentage of retention is KC20, while the lowest is PBT for the first month. Supposedly, the fraction of weight loss in all types of composites increased steadily with increasing composites ratio. However, for KC20, the percentage increased more than KC30. This might be due to the fact that KC20 contained the highest density compared to other samples. Therefore, the weight retention will result in the highest percentage. For conclusion, a biopolymer composite made of PBAT reinforced kernel core fiber was studied for its physical, mechanical, and morphological properties as well as its degradability. Analysis of tensile strength reveals that the material's ability to withstand tension reduced as the proportion of kernel core fiber in the material increased. Meanwhile, as the percentage of kernel core increased, the thickness swelling and water absorption increased owing to its hydroscopic properties and porous structure. Kernel core morphology analysis showed a smooth surface to indicate its well reinforcement with PBAT. However, these composites may exhibit weak bonding due to the differences in polarity, hence the agglomeration in the matrix. Finally, the soil barrier degradability test yielded positive results with the average kernel core to PBAT reinforcement weight decreasing after two months. According to the finding, it was expected that the longer the soil barrier period is, the longer the biodegradation of the samples obtained.